we do need to get you to Venezuela. Anti-government protests often lead to vicious crackdowns, and you had to know that was coming in Venezuela. 48 hours after the opposition to Nicolas Maduro's regime took to the streets and declared a new leader, the UN's Human Rights Office now reports Maduro's security forces and pro-government armed groups have gone on a killing rampage. At least 20 people have been murdered. Maduro is fighting, obviously, to hold on to power after opposition leader Juan Guaido announced himself interim president of the country. Minutes later, President Trump issued a statement of total support for Guaido. Shortly thereafter, Maduro ordered all U.S. embassy employees kicked out of the country. But there's also this today. Reuters is reporting private military contractors with ties to the Russian government have now flown to Venezuela to provide security for President Maduro. This powder keg explosion comes more than a year of looting and chaos as starving Venezuelans desperate for food and freedom have taken to the streets. You know, you would think Venezuela is the worst place in the world to do business, but not so. According to the brand new Heritage Foundation Index of Economic Freedom, the index measures everything from the free, free flow of capital and goods to the rule of law. The report was just released today, and here in a Fox Business exclusive is Ambassador Terry Miller of the Heritage Foundation, former Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for Economic and Global Issues. Welcome. This is uh, interesting to me. So Venezuela is not the worst. We we wanted to put up the very bottom of the barrel. Venezuela, it turns out, is the second worst, correct? That's exactly right. Uh, Venezuela's, uh, uh, we're, I mean, we're seeing a humanitarian tragedy unfold in Venezuela right now. And uh, there's certainly an economic tragedy. Uh, when we first started the Index of Economic Freedom 25 years ago, uh, Venezuela scored about 60 points on our 100-point scale. Oh now they're down to God. 25. This was absolutely predictable that the economy would collapse and, and that that would result in the kind of chaos and, and humanitarian uh, problems that we're seeing there. Right. Well, they nationalized you know, all of the oil companies, and oil was sort of their big thing. There used to be wealth and prosperity in Venezuela. And uh, so now it's number second uh, at the bottom. And then, of course, the worst is North Korea, obvious reasons. There's so many sanctions, and that, too, is a horrific regime. Cuba is the third worst. Uh, let's talk about where the U.S. Yeah. came in. It actually moved up on the scale. Uh, that's a good news story this year. Of the major economies, the U.S. had the biggest boost in economic freedom. It moved from 18th place to 12th place in our rankings. Uh, 12th place still isn't good enough, in my opinion. I'd like to see the U.S. up near the top, uh, the very top of the index. But with the tax cuts uh, last year and the deregulatory efforts, uh, we've seen a, a big boost in economic freedom and, of course, in economic performance as well in the U.S. Yep, yeah, and, and that the cutting the corporate tax rate certainly attracted more business, I am sure. Let's get to the top three. Hong Kong, Singapore, and New Zealand. Is there a common thread to any of these three? Uh, well, the most important common thread, I would say, is their openness to international trade and investment. Mm. Uh, these are all um, countries that score very highly in terms of trade freedom. And that's the one cautionary note I would have about the United States at this point. Uh, when we see the protectionist measures that are contemplated or threatened uh, by the administration, that's potentially devastating for our economic freedom. So I think it's very important that the U.S. and China, for example, um, make uh, real he really heroic efforts to resolve their differences in the month ahead. Well, uh, at least we resolved for a short time the difference of the government uh uh, shutdown, the partial shutdown. Uh, you've worked in the government, and I do just want to let our viewers know that Chuck Schumer, Senator Schumer, and uh, Speaker Nancy Pelosi are about to speak, and we will take you to those microphones in a minute. But, Ambassador, you've got to be happy that the shutdown's over, having worked in the government. Oh, I'm delighted for the um, employees of the government uh, who have suffered during this. But one of the questions I would have on, on things like air traffic control, yeah. uh, why is this a government function in the first place? Mm, okay. um, I, I, this is something the private sector does in many countries and could be done here as well. And then it wouldn't be subject to the political whims of Washington. Well, we're going to take you to Washington in just a moment. Ambassador, thank you for the report from the Heritage Foundation on economic freedom and the index.